doing stupid things. And it's especially for those of you who have hit like uh, a roadblock in your business. Well, hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. This is going to be a fun episode today. I'm going to talk to you about um, like the top five business books that I have read recently and um, and just give you some thoughts on them. For those of you who are looking for some good summer reads, uh, who need something to put in your earbud as you're flying on a plane, who you know just um, love to listen to things on Audible, what have you, I thought I um, would do a podcast on some things. I actually mentioned a book um, on one of my recent episodes that I love, that's not on this list of five, but I'm just going to mention again. Um, it's called Die With Zero, and I haven't read it like recently, but it's one that I just recently mentioned on a podcast that if you have not read it is a really interesting take on, um, uh, on how we've kind of been taught to, you know, get to retirement, get to retirement, get to retirement, make sure you have plenty of money for retirement, plenty of money for retirement. And then we retire and a lot of times die. (laughs) Try, not trying to be morbid, but um, it happens. Um, you all know people that that has happened to, or physically we're not able to really do much with the money. We're not really able to travel because we're, you know, in our late sixties or seventies or whatever. Um, and so the book Die With Zero is not on this list. Why am I mentioning this at the beginning? I should be mentioning it at the end. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Why do I do what I do? I don't know. Um, but it basically talks about how a lot of times also, by the time our parents pass away, we're past, for the majority of people, the time where we could have used money the most. So um, like both of my parents are still alive, for instance, they're both in their 70s. And, you know, Jason and I in the last, it's been in the last five, six, seven years when things financially have really changed for us. It was before that. It was in our 20s. It was in our 30s. It was in our 40s. Like that's when we really could have used like help financially or, um, you know, would have loved to have taken family vacations, that sort of thing. But the way that we've kind of been trained is to save up our money and then give it to our children after we're long gone. And then and then that's when they're really past the prime of actually needing it. It's a fascinating book. Die with zero. It's not a Christian book, but I suggest you listen to it. Okay, now on with the podcast. (laughs) That was not even on my list. Okay, just sidebar, just squirrel, sidebar. Okay, the five books that I do have on my list, write these down because I've got some interesting books here for you. Okay, so the number, or number one. So the first one is, these are in no particular order. It's called The Power of One by Ed Milet. And this is front and center on my mind, first of all, because I am in um, the Wellspring Mastermind and Ed Milet is our guest today. So I actually downloaded this book on Audible a couple of months ago. I'm about halfway through it. I still need to finish it. Um, I like listening to books on Audible, first of all. I also really like Ed Milet's voice. <laughs> His voice is very soothing to me, kind of uh, almost like the guy that does like um, Dateline NBC or, you know, 2020 or, you know, one of those shows. Like it's just kind of therapeutic. But Ed is actually speaking to my mastermind today. I'm in the middle of listening to his book. Um, I heard him talking about his book on his podcast. And I've heard him talk before about um, the way he was raised with an alcoholic father and, um, and how his father eventually got sober and how that changed the trajectory of his life and his entire family's life. So we've got some commonalities there. And, um, and so it's a, it's a good, it's a good listen. I'll just tell you that. Um, so it's called the power of one more and suggest you go listen to that. And I still need to get that one finished. Um, number two is get a grip. And so get a grip is by, um, uh, uh, Gina Wickman and Mike is it Peyton. Um, there's another get a grip that is, if you go looking for it on Amazon, but it's not by that. It's by Gina Wickman and Mike Patton. So um, it is like, how do I describe this book? It's it's a story about a company called Swan Services. And this is, it's a fable. Okay. So it's, it's not actually, you know, real, but it's a story about how this company was being run and how this company had kind of reached um, some roadblocks and how they needed to shift some things around and get the right people in the right role, um, how to assess and hire different people, how to get people with shared values. Um, it's it's um, a lot about EOS um, and entrepreneurial operating systems, which I didn't love that book, but this is interesting. The reason I started this book, and I think I just have a couple hours left on it. Does anybody else, like you start 
10 books all the same time. And then you just have to determine which one you feel like finishing first. So that's the case here. But my team wanted me to listen to this. And I will tell you that I stopped it more than once because I kind of felt, um, how do I say this in a way that doesn't make me sound horrible? I kind of felt like, oh, did my team want me to listen to this because I am doing a bad job managing? And that is not it at all. First of all, I had to like check my ego. It's a really good listen. It made me stop. It has made me stop and think and pause about different things in the company and getting people, the right people into the right seats, et cetera. And it's especially for those of you who have hit like uh, a roadblock in your business. Maybe you've gotten to a point where you haven't been able to grow past that and you're super frustrated um, with it. If that's the case, I think this is a book that you would definitely like. It's called Get a Grip. Okay. Number third, number third, <laughs> number three, number third. We're going to just say that from now on. Okay. Number third, number third is a book called The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham. So uh, my friend, Brian Dixon, uh, likes to post on his Instagram stories, things that he's listening or to, or things that he's reading. And by the way, he reads about 10 times more than I do. Um, but he's the one that I saw suggest this book. And what's really funny is, so here's what happens when I see people suggest a book that looks really good. Like I go find the book, I do a screenshot of it, or I go ahead and buy it, put in my audible or whatever. And so a couple of weeks ago, I, um, I sent Brian a text and I'm like, Hey, I think that you would love this book. It's called The Road Less Stupid by Keith Honeyham. If you haven't read it yet, you need to. And he goes, yeah, I'm pretty sure you found out about that book from me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, anyway, 80%, folks, 80%. If you don't know what that means, it means that my brain is only able to get about 80% of the things right about 80% of the time. So anyway, so um, Brian is the one that I get this book for. And The Road Less Stupid is a book about... Um, that the key to success, like the key to um, making money and keeping money is basically to stop doing stupid things. It's not necessarily that you need to do a whole bunch of smart things, but you need to quit doing stupid things. And I think that it's such a fascinating listen. Um, I highly suggest that um, you listen to it. Uh, the voice is just phenomenal. And, um, and the way that they do each chapter is they give like thinking time. Um, and they tell you at the end, basically how you just need to go sit and think and what you need to sit and think about. And then the, um, the Keith Cunningham who's reading the book. He always says, now go think you'll thank me for it later at the end of every episode. The reason I love that is this. I can remember back when I had my painting company, you know, and I started that company back in the year 2000 and different times I would walk on to, let's say a job site for new construction. That's usually where this conversation would happen. I would walk on to a job site and I would have anywhere between two and eight girls at any given home working painting for me. So I'd walk onto a job site, which is inevitably full of other subs. You know, we've got electricians, we've got tile guys, we've got people laying carpet, what have you. And inevitably, people would say things like, uh-oh, boss lady's here. Uh-oh, get back to work, girl. She's here now. And then it would always transform or transfer into something like, so, so they're out here, you know, working like crazy. What are you doing? To which I would always say, I get paid to think. And I used to say it in a snarky way. But the truth was, I was getting paid to think because I was the one that was doing marketing. I was the one that was trying to think of how we could get on extreme home makeover, how we could get this house, you know, on the parade of homes, how I could get with new designers. I was the one that was like brainstorming and thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And so even though it started out like that being a snarky response, the truth was, is it was true. I was paid. I got paid to think, and I was paying a team to work for me. What I love about the Road Less Stupid book is it has basically affirmed that that's what I have needed to been doing all of my life. The reason I don't take meetings on Friday, the reason why I don't work on Friday is because Friday is just kind of a thinking day for me, and which means it's like a dead zone on my calendar. I don't put anything on it. Um, I go get massages every Friday. I take walks every Friday. That's the day that I really like to think. The Road Less Stupid is interesting because it's talking about how you need to be thinking like daily. And if you're the CEO, if you're the entrepreneur, if you're the one that's in charge of the business, you're not giving yourself enough time to just sit and think. And if you would, then you would be able to make more money. You would be able to run your business in a different way, et cetera. I highly suggest The Road Less Stupid. It's really good. I will tell you that um, 
I'm listening to it on audible. And I also texted Brian and I said, okay, um, do you have like the hard copy of the book, which he does? Because I said, is there a place where you can like journal or write? And he said, um, or, you know, like some recaps and there is, I guess, in the hard copy of the book, but again, I'm listening on audible. What I also decided about The Road Less Stupid is that I need to go back and listen to it completely again, because it's not a book where you can be answering emails and listening on Audible. You just can't. It requires your entire attention. Does that make sense? So hope you love it. All right. Book number four is called Who, Not How. All right. So Who, Not How is a book by Dan Sullivan, who, you know, is is um, undeniably a genius when it comes to marketing and things. Um, And the book is essentially this premise that we have been trained to ask ourselves, okay, I want to double our revenue and business this year. How are we going to do that? Um, I want to be able to retire at 60. How how are we going to do that? What am I going to put in place to make sure that that happens? Um, I want to be able to, um, you know, double our reach on social media. How are we going to do that? And that the better question is not how, but who is going to do that? The better question is who, not how that we've been trained to figure out how we're going to do it. And if we would just figure out who can do it, they'll know how to do it. And that is a fascinating twist, especially for entrepreneurs. So um, it talks in the book about how like, if you, you know, are hoping to have more freedom to like relax and do hobbies and, and those sorts of things, like you have to find the right people who are going to put the right things in place for you to allow that to happen. He talks about how, like, I think he gives this one stat in the book that like 16% of our creative ideas don't or only happen when we're at work. And, um, and that the rest, you know, what's that 84% of our good ideas come outside of work, but that sometimes we get so stuck on the, how are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? That we don't even give ourselves any thinking time. Notice there's a little bit of a, you know, some similarities between the premise of this book and the last one. Um, but it is a really good book on who can do this for me. Um, the audio book, cause I'm doing all these on audio audible. The audio book is not read by Dan Sullivan. But at the end of each chapter, I think it's each chapter, um, the person that's reading the book interviews Dan at the end of each chapter. And there's like nuggets there as well. Does that make sense? So who not how it's, it's a great idea. Um, like a great idea book to just give you different ideas on how you can think and change the way that you run things because you change the way that you think about things. So highly suggest who not how. And the last one, I had another book on here. And then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to go ahead and just remind you about my book. Fear is not the boss of you. I'm just going to put that on here. And this is not one that I've read lately, but this is one that if you haven't read, I think that you should. Fear is not the boss of you is a book for any woman who feels like she is stuck. She has hit a wall. She's not living her life to her full capacity. She feels like there's something more out there. She feels like she wants to do more, but she's terrified. She's worried about what people will think of her, et cetera. Um, So fear is not the boss of you is the book that I wrote um, the year before the pandemic hit. It came out three weeks after the pandemic started. We had a 12 city book tour around the United States that I was going to be doing. All of that was canceled because of the pandemic. Um, But it's a good book. It's got well over 2000 reviews um, on Amazon. Go get it. If you have not read Fears Not the Boss of You, I highly suggest that you do. The follow-up to that was Get Unstuck and Stay Unstuck. It's just like a little coffee table book that's beautiful. Etta V designed the cover. Highly suggest you get that one as well. So shameless plug for my own book. I was gonna, I was gonna do another one that I was like that, but then I did give you the um, the die was zero at the, at the beginning. So you actually did get five other books plus my book in this podcast. So I hope that this was helpful. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books. I'd love to know what you think of them. Send me a DM on Instagram if you want to. Um, as always, I just appreciate and love you being here. And can I just say, if you have read Fears Not the Boss of You and you are one of those 2,000 people who went to Amazon and left a review, thank you. Thank you. There are millions of books on Amazon. The majority of them never get to 2,000 reviews. So thank you for that. And if you're somebody who gets something out of my podcast on a regular basis, if you've never left me a review in my podcast, would you go do that? Um, it would be just a blessing. This is how people determine whether or not they want to uh, listen to the podcast, sponsor the podcast, um, et cetera, et cetera. So as always, I just, I appreciate you being here. I thank you for taking time out of your day to listen, to leave reviews, all the things. Hope you have an incredible week, my friends. Bye-bye. Yeah, I don't know.
know why. I, I went rogue in the beginning. Usually I go rogue at the end. 